So now, the next one to look at now is the cessation. Cessation now. We want to look at cessation of a business. That's the next circumstances that give rise to abnormal basis. Remember, we're looking at the basis period for assessment. So, the next thing is what we call cessation. Now, for cessation of a business. Now, remember we said, when you hear the word cessation, cessation is a process, you know, of, you know, when a business, you know, is gradually, you know, going into liquidation or folding up. Yeah, that's a cessation of a business. When a business organization is no longer existing, that is a cessation. It's actually want to cease operating. When a business organization want to cease their operational activities, is basically called cessation. That's like a bankruptcy or you can call it a liquidation of a business. But in the process of a, a, what they call cessation, by the time a business wants to cease the operation also, in the process of seizing the operation, tax authority normally also has uh, can uh, normally apply some rules in order to assess the profit of that company that actually sees their operational activities. You know, remember we say now I know this tradition. I don't want to uh, bother you with uh, you know the cost of a uh, cessation of a business. That is not important in this case. But here in this case, we want to look at now when whenever a business wants to see their operational activities, what are those rules? What are those rules now? What you call rules applicable? Are they rules applicable for cessation? Rules applicable for cessation now, which means whenever a company or a business want to cease their business, want to cease their operational activity, what are those rules that the tax authority normally apply on the profit of the company that ceases operation? We have basically two rules. The first rule. It's called the ultimate, the ultimate year. I mean, ultimate year. This is the year of cessation. Ultimate year simply means it is a year of cessation. Yeah, ultimate year is the year the business ceases their operational activity, and in that year, profit is assessed from. 1st of January of that year, 1st of January, to the date of cessation, to the date of cessation. For example, if a business sees maybe 30th of April 2018, let's assume a business sees. Yeah, so which means our, we are going to say year of assessment, for example, basis period and the accessible profit. So, which means the first year of assessment, which is ultimate year, ultimate year, remember, we say is the year the business commence up, uh, sorry, cease operation. So, 2018, let's assume this business cease in 2018. So, which means 2018 is the first, is the ultimate year. Okay, so remember, we're talking uh, about those rules applicable when, um, when you want to ask, when task authority want to assess the profit of a company that is, um, is in the process of winding up. Or that cease operation. So remember, we say we have ultimate year. We said this is a year of cessation. That's the rules applicable for cessation. We said it's a year of cessation, and the profit of a company is assessed from January to the date of cessation. When I say okay, in this case, let's assume a company ceases on 30th of April 2018. So we are going to say year of assessment, basis period, and the assessable profit. So which means. The first year of assessment, which is ultimate year, remember we say it's the year the car, the business sees, you know, that's ultimate year. We are going to say it here in this question, this is an example. So in this case, 2018 is the year of assessment since that is the year the company sees or the business sees operation. So our basis, we remember, is going to be based on the profits the company, no, that's what normally assess from January of that year to the date the company or the business sees. So in this case, the business sees 30th of April 2018. So which means we are going to say 1st of January, according to the rule, 2018 to 30th of April 2018, which means any amount, the profit, any amount the company generated within January of 2018 to the date, which is April, that is a profit we are going to assess so we call it you know we call it that is the ultimate year is the year of cessation and profit in that year is assessed from january of that year to the dates 
even if the business ceases in February, we are going to say from January 2018 to 28th of February. Even if the business ceases in 31st of January, we are going to say 1st of January 2018 to 31st of January 12, which is only one month. So that is the first rule, you know, for the cessation. The second rule now. The second rule for the cessation is what we call the pen ultimate year. The pen ultimate year. Pen ultimate year. Which means an ultimate year simply means it is a year before cessation. It is a year before companies cease the operational activity. It's called the pen ultimate year. And in this year, called pen ultimate year, there are two kind of assessments that are to does to a company in this pen ultimate year. Which means, remember I say pen ultimate year, this is a year before the business cease operation. So, and there are two assessments that tax authority normally does in this pen ultimate year. They assess the company on the actual year basis they also assess the company on the preceding year basis. remember i've explained what the actual year basis and also preceding year is now basis in the in a previous video so which means there are two assessments on that penultimate year we are going to now look at the actual year of course you know under cessation it is a tax authority that has a right for election which means tax authority has how you know chooses you know the higher of the actual year basis or preceding year basis under the pen, pen ultimate year which means the task order is going to choose the higher of this of this you know two whichever is higher whichever profit is higher between the actual year basis and the person that is what the tax authority will choose to assess the taxpayer under the pen ultimate year so remember i said there are two assessment there actual year basis and also the person whichever is higher between these two that is what the task authority is going to because under cessation it is a task authority a relevant task that has the right for election that has the right to choose how to assess the company which means where the task authority will choose higher because of course remember here the company want to die so if the company want to die you know task authority has the right of election they all have to choose which of the higher of these two that's when the task authority is going to choose. so these are the two major rules for cessation the ultimate year which which we call the year the company sees operation also uh, we say in that year profit is assessed from january to the date of cessation then we have pen ultimate year simply means the year the business sees operation and there are two kind of assessments we have actual year based and also we have the preceding year basis so these are the two rules tax authorities normally apply to assess the profit of a company that sees operation so I think we should look at a question on the decision. Okay, so um, the um, okay, we are looking at the question on the decision of business. Remember, we have uh, talked about what a cessation of a business is all about. Yeah, we have said that the cessation is a situation where whereby you know a a business organization actually is a a uh, 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 folding up or going into liquidation or bankruptcy so that's basically what a uh, uh, cessation of business so and i want to say that when a business is actually experiencing financial difficulty i want to go into liquidation or seize operations tax authority has a way of assessing the profits of the company that sees the operational activity which is saying uh, we have two rules that guide that we so we have the normal uh, uh the ultimate a year which is called the year of cessation and we say that profits are assessed from january to the date of cessation also we have the pen ultimate year which is a year before cessation and profits are assessed on two bases on the actual basis that is on that year and also on the preceding year basis and also we say that under the cessation is a tax authority that has a right or option for election which means tax authority has a right or option to opt for a particular election between the higher between the higher remember higher of the actual or preceding year under the penultimate year so let's look at this question this question says just, uh, just enterprise has been operating or limited the way you know in a manufacturing industry for many years due to shortage of the soil material the company ceased operation in 2012 the following below the following below is the few adjusted profit of the company you know they say year ended 30th June 2009, you have 140 million. Year ended 30th June 2010, 132 million. Year ended 30th June 2011, 138. Year ended 30th June 2012 is 120 million. Then period to cease 
31st of October 2014, uh, $40 million. Require complete assessment for relevant years and advise the Federal Air Revenue Service. Remember, we say companies basically the, 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 the relevant authority for assessing the profit of a company are the Federal Air Revenue Service. So, the NASA issue advise the Federal Air Revenue. I want to say on that situation is the federal that has an option for election. So now, this is a question now. So the first thing here is that solution. In our solution, this is a solution. We have just uh, enterprise, you know, competition of competition of accessible profits for relevant years for relevant. Yes, of course. Now, of course, we have uh, the year of assessment, basis period, and accessible profits, of course. And I like starting with ultimate year. Ultimate year. That's the year of cessation. The ultimate year is the year of cessation. So, in this case, we are told that the business sees on 31st of October 2012, of course. So, 2012 is going to be the first year of assessment which means it's going to be the ultimate year that's a year and remember we say in that ultimate year profits are assessed from january to the date of cessation this business sees 31st of october 2012 so which means we're going to say first of january 2012 to 31st of october 2012 which means it's 10 month profit we are going to assess in that particular profit yeah period it's just a 10 month profit we are going to assess so now let's go back you know in this question the accounting year end of this question we are saying that is 30th of june every year so let's go to now the 2012 now the 2012 year ended in june even though the 2013 began in first of july 2012 though and of, of course the business season october so which means what we are going to do here we are going to say now from general we're going to calculate from january to june first because the year 2012 end in june and remember here we are looking for what we are looking for here is from january to october which is 10 months but the first of course this year 2012 end in june so which means we have to go and calculate from january to june 1st and remember this year 2012 began first of july 2011 check very well this 30th of june 2012 began first of july 2011 and ended at 30th of june 2012 so which means is a 12 month profit so since the 12 but we are looking for just from january 2012 to june so which means we are going to take six months first we're going to say six over 12 times 120 million first that's what we're going to take now which means we're going to say from june to june and remember if we have taken from june to june we need july august september october so we mean we need the remaining four months remember january to october is what we're looking for but the year 2012 end in june it starts from 1st of July 2011 and end at 30th of June 2012. So which means we have to go and calculate from January to June 1st, which is 6 months, 6 over 12 times 1. Then plus the remaining 4 months now has entered within another. Remember the year, if you know that the business sees in October 2012, the year 2013 will have begun, commenced from July 2012. So which means from July to October 2012 has entered within another year. So, if you look at now, since this business ceased in June 2012, which means this year began from July, but the business ceased in October. And within from July to October, look at from July 2012 to 31st of October 2012, they made a profit of 40 million naira. You know, this 2012 end in June. So, which means another year has begun, 1st of July 2012 to 31st of October 2012, which means oh, just, uh, just four months. So which means we have to go and carry just take that four months profit they made between the july to june july to october sorry yeah so whatever we have half of this 120 plus this is going to give us so half of 120 you know uh divided by two what about plus 40 million is going to give us so which means our assessable profit here is going to be 100 million naira please as our accessible profit remember we said uh, uh, you are calculating from January to date of cessation, and the date of cessation here is 31st of October. So, which means in this case, you have to go and calculate first. Since this year 2012 end in June, you have to go and calculate from January to June first. 
then of course before you calculate from july to october and july to october is already given to us exactly 40 million so we can now go and uh, calculate out the truth will give us exactly so that is the ultimate pr year let's go and look at the pen ultimate pen ultimate year remember we say pen ultimate year is the year before cessation yeah and profits assessed on two bases actual year basis and preceding year basis. so let's start with the preceding year basis remember pen ultimate year is 2011 that's a year before cessation so now on preceding year basis we are going to say what is the year before 2011 the year before 2011 is 2010 and what is the accounting year end the accounting year end of this company is 30th of june so we are going to say 30th of june 2010 when is the beginning of that year the beginning of that year if you add remember if you add one month to june you know it's going to give you first of july so first of july because we want to know the beginning of that year you have to count 12 months backward 12 months backward so first add one month to just going to give you first of july 2009 no please not 2008 uh 2010 again because you cannot have 2008 again you know just add one month to june it's going to give you july abby so of course the beginning of that year just count 12 months backward you get exactly 12 months so let's go to the question now if you look at this question is 132 million is exactly the period 12 months we are looking for because this 30th of june 2012 began from 1st of july 2009 to 30th of june 2010 so we have 130 million then we have actual year basis remember actual year we say from january to december so 1st of january 2011 2011 to 31st of december 2011 so in this case now we are going to say general to summer 2011 remember we say go to year 2011 year 2011 end in june so which means you have to go and calculate again first january to june first and you know this year 2011 began from first of july 2010 so which means you only need from january to june first so we are going to say first six general to june is six months six over 12 times 138 million then again from july to december 2011 has entered year 2012 check and see because remember this 2011 has ended in june another year will begin 2012 year will begin again, the next month which means it's going to begin first of july 2011 to 30th of june 2012 so which means again also from this uh, 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 uh 120 million again we're going to pick also six months to make it 12 months yeah because remember we said the remaining general uh, july to december has entered within year 2012 and within that year we have 120 million so we are going to say 6 over 12 times 120 million so we are going to add this we are going to say 138 divided by 2 is given uh, going to give us 69 million 69 million 69 million then plus 6 half of 120 is 60 million so if you add 69 plus 60 it's going to give us 129 million so in this case now remember we said that the social advice the tax authority so which means under this uh under this situation is a tax authority that has a right for election yeah he has a right so which means you are going to advise the tax authority between under the pen ultimate year please under the pen ultimate year he has the right to choose the higher of the actual year basis or preceding year basis so which one is higher 132 which is the preceding year is higher than 120 which is uh actual so which means we are going to advise him to go for the abbey base so i will say advice based on the based on the pen ultimate an ultimate year the federal Elder revenue survey is advised to go to assess the taxpayer are on the preceding year basis are yeah because it's going to assess more tax so which means the total amount tax authority will assess we are going to say okay the accessible profit now is going to be now the uh and the total remember we are talking about 2012 okay, and 2011 so 2012 our accessible profits okay, our accessible profits is going to be 
how much is going to be 100 million of course then 2011 remember he's choosing he's going to assess the higher of these two the higher of the preceding year and the actual under the penultimate year so, we'll so you add 100 uh, million uh, plus 142 you get 132 so that is the end of this question okay so now we want to be looking at the third uh circumstances that uh makes you know that give rise to what they call abnormal basis pay which we call the change of accounting dates of course when we talk about change of accounting date change of accounting date also is a situation whereby a company is changing from one financial year end to another financial year end maybe a company is using 31st of december as the financial year end when you say financial year we mean the year that is the the period year end that a company normally you know end the accounting year that's what we call the financial year or the accounting dates we're talking about normally from the beginning of a particular accounting year to the end of a particular accounting which is exactly which must be exactly 12 months so here when we say change of accounting day is a situation also where you know a company is switching from one accounting date to another accounting date yeah so which means now also whenever a company is changing the accounting date also there are rules also tax authority rules tax authority apply in assessing the profit of a company that normally you know they actually switch or change their accounting dates the first rule is that the company you know identify the year of change which means the first in tax authority is that tax authority need to go and identify the year of change when i said year of change for example let's assume we have to uh, this xyz company and abc okay let's assume this is uh this let's assume this is uh, 30th june june 2000 2000 maybe this is that okay let me put it here 30th of june 2000 30th of june 2001 30th of june 2002 and maybe 30th okay uh, uh yeah 30th of june 2002 and maybe 31st of december 2003 then maybe this one is a third 31st of march 2000 31st of March 2001, 31st of March 2002, then 31st of December 2002. So now, if you ask me, they say the first rule is that you have to identify the year of change. Now, let's assume this is a company. This company has been preparing the account year and 30 of June every year. Can you, and in your 2000, 30 of June, 2001, 30 of June, 2002, 30 of June. Now, this company now changed the account year in 2003. So, which means 2003 is the year of change because they actually switch from june to december so here in this case 2003 is the year of change please note that because they've been using uh june every year so then 2003 they not change to december abc has been using 31st of march every year 31st of march every year 31st of here december 2003 now this company has been using now if i ask to identify the year of change here for this one the year of change is not 2002 even though now even though you can see 31st of December here and please note here when you see two months in the same year that change does not occur in that year that change occurred in this following year please this change does not occur remember uh, the, um, 31st of March 31st of March 31st of March now 2002 here 31st of December 2002 even though please the change does not occur in 2002 the change occurred in 2003 even though the effect began in 2002 but the change occurred in 2003 why because if you see two months in the same year just know that the change does not occur in that year the change occurred in the following year so that is that so the first thing is that you have to go and identify the year of change the second rule is that you identify two years two years following the year of change identify two years following the year of change of course maybe if the year of change is 2000 and two you now say 2003 and 2004 those are the two years following the year of change yeah so that is that then the third rule is that you the the assessment the assessment shall be based on preceding year yeah so which means we assess the company based on preceding year 
Yeah, the assessment shall be based on the preceding year. Then number four, you compute for the old and the new accounting dates, which means you have to compute for the old and the new accounting date. If the old is 1st of March, you have to do for that. If the old new for is 1st of December, you have to also do for that. Then of course, number five is you add up, add up the old and the new accounting date and advise the uh, tax authority tax authority on the higher higher of the two so which means remember also under the uh, change of accounting date it is the tax authority that has an option for election has a right to choose the higher so which means he has a right to choose the higher of the total of the old accounting date you add the three years then of course under the new accounting date also you add the three years whichever is higher between the old and the new accounting date that's what you are going to advise the taxpayer to go for so these are the rules for the change of accounting date the first thing identify the year of change identify two years following the year of change making it three years the assessment shall be based on preceding year compute for the old and the new account date and also you add up the old and the new accounting date and advise the tax authority on the higher of so these are the rules that are guiding you know the assessment of the company that changed their accounting year okay, so we want to be looking at a question under this uh, change of accounting date yeah so let's look at the question this question says that the mango limited has been operating for many years the company has been operating and it's uh has been preparing its financial report up to the first of march the company has been preparing its financial report up to the first of march each year the industry regulatory agency mandated every company to change accounting date to the 1st of December. Okay. The following is the adjusted profit of the company for tax purposes. Year ended at 1st of March, 2000, 150 million. Year ended at 1st of March, 2001, 172. Year ended at 1st of March, 2002, 188. Period 2, 31st of December, 2002. Uh, year ended at 1st of March, 2003, 148 million. Year ended at 1st of December, 2004. Well, you have uh, 180 require complete accessible profit for relevant years and advise the tax authority on the, the option for election so this is that so in the solution for this question now solution remember this is a solution remember we said uh, we have mango uh, limited of course we have competition competition of accessible Accessible, accessible, accessible profit for relevant years, for relevant years, yes, for relevant, yes. So we start with the normal, sorry, we start with the old accounting date old accounting date yeah we'll start with the old accounting date in all the old accounting we have year of assessment you have the basis period and also we have the accessible profit so that is that we'll start with the old remember you must compute for the old and the new accounting date so i remember the old day the old date we say is the match of course the new day is december so first the first rule you have to identify the year of change remember i told you the company has been their account you know their financial year uh, uh, report up to the 1st of march every year 2000 and uh, 2001 march 2002 march period to the 1st of december 2002 now the year of change please is not 2002 the year of change is 2003 because the company has already prepared for the already for the old accounting day already for 2002 which is march yeah the company has already prepared their financial report for 2002 it is a two and three they refuse to prepare for the match now in two and three. So which means please when you see remember I told you when you see two months in the same year, the change does not occur in that year, the change occurs in the following year. So which means the year of change here is two thousand and three. Please is not two thousand two. Because though the effect began in two thousand two, but the change occurred in two thousand three. So the change is in two thousand and three. So now let's go. So in that case now. Remember, we say the assessment shall be based on preceding year. So, what is the year before 2003? It's 2002. And what's the old accounting date? It's 31st of March. So, we are going to say 31st of March 2000. 
and two. Abe, so I want to know uh, the beginning of 12 months. You want to know the beginning of this year. So count 12 months backward. Remember, I told you backward. Now, for you to know that, just add one month to March. Is it not April? Yeah. So 1st of April 2001 is the beginning of that year. Yeah, it's the beginning of that year. It, the year before two and three, two and two. The account, the old account date is the 1st of March. Yeah. Just add this. You get, and of course, do that and count 12 more back. You are going to get 1st of April 2001. So go to the question now. If you check exactly this amount, this one that it, it is exactly between because this one that this that first of March 2018 began from 1st of April 2001 to 31st of March 2002. So which means this one that it's 8 million is what we are going to record as our accessible profit for the old accounting that for 2003. So let's go to 2004. Remember, that's what we say you have to identify two years. So we are complete for 2003. 2004 and 2005. So now you go to 2004. So remember, based on preceding year, the year before 2004 is 2003, and the account the, the accounting year is 31st of March. So 31st of March 2003 was the beginning of that year. 1st of April 2002. 1st of April 2002. Okay. So let's go. Now, if you look at now very well, if you look at this very well, remember now, year 2002. Remember, this year 2002, you know year 2002 end in March. Another year began 1st of April 2002. Watch it very well. Abe, now, but the accounting year end changed, in, Abe, changed to December 2002. So, which means, first, we remember what we are looking for here is 1st of April 2002 to 31st of this, uh, March 2003. Remember, but remember, this year 2002 end in March. So, another year would begin first, another year began 1st of April. 2002. Even though there was a change of accounting they during that particular period to 31st of December in 2002. Yeah, there was a change in, you know. So, which means first we have to go and compete from April 2002 to December. And within that particular period, they made a profit of 25 million. So, which means we are going to compete for how many months profit? April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Which means we are competing for nine months. Of course. Now, from April 2002 to 31st of December, remember I told you, anytime you see period two, which means that period is less than 12 months. So from 1st of April 2002 to 31st of March 2002, which means it's nine months. Yeah, it's nine months. And within that nine months, they made a profit of 25 million. So let's go on. Let's come and bring it here. Since it's within the period we are looking because April 2002 to December 2002 is inside April 2002 to 31st of March 2003. So we have computed from April to December 2002. So what we are looking for now is January to March 2003. Yeah, to make up exactly, you know, uh, our 12 month. So, but note that that three month January to uh, 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 2003 to March has entered this year 2003 already because this year 2003 began from January to December. Remember, the accounting year has changed. Yeah, you remember this that first of uh, December two and uh, and uh, December two and three began from January to December. So, which means that three months from January from January to March has entered within this year. Because remember, this first of April to December we made this amount of profit. So again, what you are this is the end of this two and two. What you are looking for is January to March two and three. Now, which means we have to go and pick three months from this one hundred and forty-eight. I mean, from January 2003 to December, but what we are looking for is January to March. So, we are going to say plus uh, uh, 3 over 12 times 148 million to give us exactly the three months we are looking for so that we can add it to get the. So, now we are going to say 3 divided by 12 times 148 million. It's going to give us 37 million plus 25 million. To give us 62 million as our accessible profit yeah so that is that then 2005 remember that's uh remember we said the year before 2005 is 2004 i mean the accounting year end the old one is still at first of march so 31st of march 2000 the year before i mean 2004 the if I want to know the beginning of that year, I'll just add one month to give me 1st of April 2003. Abi, 1st of April 2003. Abi, so let's go to the question. So, if you go to the question, remember, in this 2003 year, this you know it's January to December, Abi. You know, if you remember very well, we have peaked from January to March. 
which is 3 over 12. Remain April to December 2003. We have already picked January to March in this 2003. So let's go and pick April because remember what we are doing is April. April to December. So we are going to say April to December, remember it's 9 months. We are going to say 9 over 12 times 148 million. Yeah, 9 over 12. Why? Because April, we have already taken general to March. What we are looking for now is April to December first. I mean, then again, remember what we are looking for is April to December, April 2003 to 31st of March 2004. So now, in 2003, we have already picking, we have already picked April, uh, uh, first of April to December. Now again, 31st of March 2004 now has entered this year 2004. Remember, this year 2004 begin from January 2004 to December 2004. So what we are looking for is uh, only the three months, January to March. So we are going to say three months, which is a three over 12 times 180 million. So make exact. So we are going to say nine, I guess nine divided by 12 times 148 million. It's going to give us 111 plus three divided by 12, 3, 3 divided by 12, 3 divided by 12, 3 divided by 3, 3 divided by 12 times 180, it will give us 45 million. So we now add the 2 plus to give us 156 million as our accessible profit. So this is the old accounting date. Yeah, this is the old accounting date. This is the old accounting date. This is the old accounting. So in that case now, let's go and compute for the new accounting date now. Let's go and compute for the new accounting date. Yeah, the new accounting date. Let's go and compute for the new accounting date. So now, for the new accounting date, of course, we have to go and say that, okay, new accounting date. You have assessment, basis period, and accessible profit. Remember, new account, of course, the year of change is still 2003, so we have 2003. I mean, the new date now is not December. So the year before 2003 is 2002. So we are going to say 31st of December 2002, 1st of January 2002. Yeah, that's 12 months. Remember, the, the end of the year, of course, December is the beginning. So let's go to the question now and see. So if you look at now, January, if you look at 2002 very well, please look at 2002 very well. If you look at 2002, the, of course, the month 2002, uh, well, one of 2002 year end in March, I mean, look at March 2002. So, which means, but well, remember this year 2002 began from 1st of April 2001 to 31st of March 2002. But all what we are interested in is January to March 2002. That is what we are interested about. January 2002 to March 1st. Yeah. So, we are going to say that's three months. We are going to say three over 12 times uh, okay. 100. So, three over, three over 12, three. 3 divided by 12. Okay. So remember, the remaining 3 over 12 times 188. So remember, we out of this 2 and 2, we have picked only 3 months, January to March 2 and 2. Already, from April to December 2 and 2, already is 25 million. Yeah, given to us. Remember this period too, Abi? From April to December 2 and 2 is what? So it's 25 million already. So we cannot add it to give us exactly 12 months. So we're going to say uh, 3 divided by 12. You know, times 188,000 is 47 million plus 25 million. So we have 72 million as our accessible profit. Then 2004. Of course, in 2004, in 2004, remember we said it's still going to be, you know, the same thing. The year before 2004 is 2003, and the new accounting date is 31st of December. So we're going to say, 31st of December 2003. 1st of January 2003. So let's go to the question. Exactly now. If you look at the question, 
Now, these two are tweeted at 1st of December from January to December. Exactly what we are looking for is 140 because this year ended at 1st of December 2003. Abi, exactly 148 million. Then 2005. Abi, remember the year before 2005 is 2004, and the accounting year end is 31st of the, the new accounting date is a new 31st of December. So we are going to start 1st of December 2004, 1st of January 2004. Okay, so what are we having? We're having 180 million. So that is so now for us to advise the taxpayer, of course, we have got let's do summary of assessment, Abi, so that we can advise the tax authority. Sorry, on that. So summary, summary of assessment. So you have the new date, you have the old date, old date. You have the new dates, of course, 2003, 2004, 2005. The old dates, 188 million, you have 62 million, we have 156 million. The new date is 72 million, 148 million, and 180 million. So if, let's add the two and see. Let's add it to 188, 188 million plus 62 million plus 156 million. So you get 406 million. 72 million plus one. 72, 72 million plus 148 million plus 180 million. So you get 400 million. 400 million. Yeah. So when we want to advise the tax, if you want to advise the tax authority in this case, we now advise them to go for the higher of the new or so which one is higher? The old accounting date is, is better than the is higher than the new account. So which means they are therefore the tax authority is therefore advised to assess the company on the basis of the old accounting uh, date. So that is a conclusion of this change of accounting date, of course. So that is that. Thank you very much.